Hello, bonjour. My name is Paulo de Castro Reis, and I'm the executive director of CCBC, the Chamber of Commerce, Brazil, Canada. For more than 45 years, CCBC is working to promote trade, investments, cultural and technological exchange between the two countries. With offices in Sao Paulo, Brazil, and in Montreal, Quebec, Canada, and more than 80 employees, we work in various sectors, and agribusiness is one of the main sectors we, we focus our attention. I'm very glad to be here today opening this event. Brazil is the third major food exporter in the world and plays a strategic role in food production field. Agribusiness is the fast growing, the fastest growing uh, area in Brazil. Uh, the companies are investing a lot in technology applied in different fields, seeds, machinery, monitoring equipment, covering uh, a food process from planting to delivery. The rural areas are becoming new hubs for innovation and research and development. In this panel, we will get to know a little bit more about Brazilian agribusiness production and innovation trends. We have a, a very nice lineup, a great group of experts that will share their knowledge with us in this panel. And I would like to start by calling Giovanna Araujo, leading partner of agribusiness at KPMG Brazil, to act as the moderator of this panel. Welcome, Giovanna. Welcome, Paulo. Thanks for the introduction. Hi, everyone. I'm Giovanna Araujo, the sector leader of agribusiness at KPMG Brazil. I'd like, I'd like to thank you for the invitation to join this panel inside Fusion AgriTech Challenge. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here with all of you today. I would like also to greet the other panelists. We have here with us today, Sibeli de Andrade Silva, General Coordinator of Mechanization, New Technologies and Genetic Resources at MAPA, Ministry of Agriculture and Livestock. Octavio Celidonio, Executive Director and CEO of AgriHub. José Belaski, Lecturer at University of São Paulo, Exalc USP. Marco Ripoli, PAG, Founder of Bioenergy Consulting, AgriHack, and o Agro Não Para Program. I will start sharing a view uh, about general panorama of agribusiness industry in Brazil, uh, setting the scene for our discussions today. And uh, we can move for the first slide, the first slide. Uh, and uh, where you could, you could see the size of the agribusiness in Brazil nowadays, we are talking about 1.6 trillion overrides, roughly $300 billion at current effects. This considers the perspective of all value chain before the gate, inside the gate, and after the gate. This 1.6 trillion overrides represented about 21% of Brazil's GDP by the end of last year. This 21% share might potentially increase to 24% this year, since the sector is one of the few that, that presents nowadays growth in Brazil, um, showing a GDP growth of almost 7% until July. Uh, the agribusiness sector accounted for roughly 50% of Brazilian total exports in value this year versus 43% last year. Uh, in the next slide, we can see uh, the most relevant producing segments in the agribusiness value chain in Brazil uh, is still setting the scene here, divided by agriculture and livestock. Uh, moving to the next slide, uh, 
it's important information. Now, you know, Brazil consolidated its leading role in the global agribusiness. It ranks between first and third position in production and exports of the main food products, soybean, sugar, orange juice, poultry. Nowadays, China stands out as Brazil's major trading partner, absorbing 34% of Brazil's agribusiness exports. Asia stands as the main continent, representing 51% of the country's agribusiness exports. So indeed, Brazil has a leading role in the global agribusiness. Um, in the next slide, you can see that uh, this leadership was built uh, over the last 30 years. Uh, if we look at the picture over the last 30 years, uh, of the balance of global agricultural trade, Brazil was already placing itself uh, as an agricultural power, but it lagged uh, USA, Australia, and Argentina as a net food exporter. After 30 years, in the next slide, Brazil takes the lead as a net food exporter of agricultural products, uh, and China is the major net food importer. Brazil, as a protagonist of this global contest, needs to respond to the challenge of feeding an additional contingent of 2.5 billion people over the next 30 years. 2.5 billion people. These are uh, well-known figures published by uh, FAO, which means almost two Chinas in terms of uh, population. Moving to the next slide, um, it's an important mes message that I would like to leave with you today. The challenge of Brazil is keep growing uh, in a profitable and a sustainable way, finance this growth and create new paradigms of trust with consumers. This growth of our business sector in volumes over the next year was sizable. We are talking about 8% figure for over the last 10 years, um, almost the same um, uh, level if you look to the last 20 years, it's a sizable growth. And the starting point of this journey is profitability. Uh, through the search of, for increasing productivity gains uh, with the maximization of value, of the same asset base. So this is the starting point. Uh, and it's important, so in this search of productivity, solutions such, such as precision agriculture, digital IoT solutions that increase intuition about process, we gain more and more space in Brazilian agribusiness. Um, as more investment in infrastructure and digital connectivity in rural areas materialize, this digital connectivity will allow agribusiness to move quickly on the digitalization curve, uh, which will translate in continuous productivity gains in, in our view. So this is the starting point. Uh, on top of that, uh, the, the Brazilian agribusiness company needs to produce more uh, on the same asset base, uh, and it will be imperative for agriculture and livestock to produce more with less inputs and also to reduce the impact of operational activities on the environment, so sustainability. Uh, there are several opportunities to scale sustainable practices in Brazil agriculture uh, space, particularly through the technologies of low carbon agriculture program, for example, including crop livestock forest integration system, uh, no-till system, biological nitrogen fixation, waste treatment animals, for example. Companies will need to quantify uh, and inform their carbon emissions going forward. We expect that making commitments um, in terms of water use, land use, uh, so uh, it's an important uh, point uh, in this uh, so-called um, um, challenging uh, 
uh, of growth uh, for the companies in Brazil. Um, on top of that, agribusiness will need to finance this virtual growth uh, through the diversification of capital sources toward the capital market. Uh, we are talking about that and also equity operations. This is a movement that we are seeing nowadays, very pronounced trend in Brazil. Uh, in the debt side, uh, we would like to highlight here financing structures linked to social and environmental goals. Um, green finance has the potential to mobilize substantial portions of the capital needed to make Brazil the global leader in the sustainable agriculture, in our view. Um, by promoting greater efficiency in the use of resources. Another highlight here is digital platforms providing financial services. So this is another important pillar in this growth challenge, uh, challenges of uh, Brazil agribusiness. And last but not least, it also be imperative for agriculture and livestock in Brazil to create new paradigms of trust with all agents in the agribusiness value chain, particularly with the consumers. It is necessary to generate transparency of information about the life cycle of products, for example, tell the health narrative, the immunity narrative, so that people feel safe in the consumption of food. Uh, with the new technology, it's possible to attach to our products the digital signals that are important for these consumers. Thus, we, we will see a food system increasingly uh, based on digital. Uh, in technologies, uh, whether biological, physical, and now digital technologies are potential accelerators of this virtual growth. Uh, in reality, the new technologies are reshaping all aspects of the agri-food value chain. Uh, here in Brazil and globally from how to produce and how products are processed, distributed and consumed. Um, another interesting point, uh, there is a change in the dynamics of innovation in Brazil. In the past, innovation uh, used to happen essentially through a large player in the, within the value chain. Today, agricultural companies are accessing uh, several innovation ecosystems, creating their own ecosystems. Therefore, the message here that I would like to leave with you is that uh, startups and the environment uh, is very promising uh, in Brazil nowadays. So uh, those are the main considerations that I would like to share with you today. Uh, I would like to pass the word to our next speaker. Sibeli de Andrade Silva. Uh, please, Sibeli, join, uh, join us. Okay. Thank you, Giovanna. Do you hear me? Yes, okay. I hear you. Okay. Thank you, Giovanna. Good afternoon to everyone. I'm Sibeli Silva. I work inside the Department to Innovation for Agriculture here at the Ministry of Agriculture for Brazil. It's a pleasure, it's a pleasure to talk to you today. I hope we have more opportunities like this because I believe that we have a lot to learn with each other's experience. And I'm here to present to you a big picture for the strategic vision for innovation in agriculture that we are building inside here, the Ministry of Agriculture. First of all, we have in mind the well-known future scenarios for agriculture. We know that globally it has been estimated that 70% increase in food supply is needed to meet the needs of a population of around 9 billion of people by 2050. And as a consequence, agriculture producers are forced to increase productivity. And also we have the big challenge of climate change that limits the production. And more, we, we, have to, we need to think 
that we do not need only more food itself. We need more nutrition, we need more nutritive food besides more water, energy, and so on. Considering, as Giovanna said, the sustainable use of all of the resources. We need to remember that the modern farmers are not only agricultural producers, but they are also quality food suppliers and ecosystem managers. And here with this big scenario, I want to give this idea to show you our strategic horizon to match the needs that emerge from this scenario. We have four subjects that compose the basement of our guideline of work here at the Ministry of Agriculture and Innovation. These are the four, sustainability, food security, food safety, and this one food safety was really demanding in these COVID times and also the society. In each of the subjects, we have some priorities. For sustainable, for, in, for instance, the main areas are related to advances in innovation in agribusiness, and those advances are related to decarbonization, GAG mitigation, and the sustainable exploration of resources at all. In the food security framework, we focus on the advances in productivity itself, its efficiency, effectiveness, in the food deficit and also in the nutritional deficit, as I said, which include strategies for overcome the hunger and malnutrition challenge, which also includes reducing of the losses and waste. In the food safety, we consider the need of technology advances to include traceability to attend the consumer's demand of information, which is related to certification issues. And we have additional focus on the value capture, which means convincing and proving to the consumer about the sustainability in the food chain of the final products they buy. And at last, but not less important, the society. We aim to promote the sensibilization to the society about how good to the planet they can do if we prefer the consumption of sustainable products that can be made from our national biodiversity. And then based on these four subjects, we have a strong strategy. And this strategy we call Agri-Bio-Digital Agenda. And these are our strategic access. They are our focus of work to continue developing innovation in agriculture in Brazil. The first strategic goal is again sustainability itself, addressing public policies for weather, for promoting an environment for the development of new brands, trademarks that better communicate our already existing sustainability practices. And we want to associate those policies with technology Brazil institutions have been developing to monitor water, soil, climate change, and so on. And more, we want to associate those policies with the opportunities to develop more and more technologies. And the second axis here includes the innovative actions taken to produce food, feed, bio-based materials and bioenergy resources and even to optimize and develop these products from renewable biological resources. The innovative and sustainable technologies we aim includes the most recent findings from chemical and biotechnology areas like genome editing, like the bio inputs. And we have here at the Ministry of Agriculture, a bio input national program to enhance this strategy. The third here is about the digital technologies in agriculture. We want to improve connectivity in the farms. I don't know if you know, but about 70% of the agriculture areas in Brazil face troubles with connective if they have, and we need to solve this. Develop initiative for virtual learning, promoting the development of blockchain technology in agribusiness is one of our objectives too for using it in the traceability inside the food chains. We also have initiative about precision agriculture and similar technologies. And the fourth here is open innovation. And that's why we are here. That's why we show this innovation strategy to many environments. 
we foster the startups that are dedicated to agribusiness. We are developing a strategy to have innovation ecosystems dedicated to agribusiness and also to specific subjects like the bio inputs, like the bio-based agriculture. And this subject, the bio-based agriculture, we strongly believe that we will increase a lot in the next three years. And promoting also more and more partnerships regarding all of those, those subjects within Brazil and even outside. And the last point here of our bio-digital agenda is the food tech. Food tech for us is the food for the future. We include actions to research and development of, for new ingredients, for plant-based proteins, cell-based, the synthetic proteins to precision fermentation, um, vertical farms, packing technology, and so on. Then we have these five are, are as the basis of our agribiodigital agenda that comprehends all of the actions that the Ministry of Agriculture intends to promote in the field of innovation in agribusiness. And seeing this, I just want to show you now some examples of what we are studying and doing considering those five points I presented. About sustainability, just to, to give you a brief, we know consumers are in even great numbers choosing to buy sustainability. We are at a really turning point. We can choose a future where the goods and services we need are really produced in ways that regenerate and preserve the natural world. We know that agriculture is evolving, we pass through a green revolution, and we are at the beginning of a new wave that is focused on this bio-based agriculture, on the complexity of the microbiological systems, where the agriculture is even more multidisciplinary and where we need more and more innovation and complex research, including the help, including the help of the digital technologies to measure and to promote such sustainability. And about the digital technology, together with the strategy axis of the bioeconomy, we have a powerful tool. We are following in agriculture what the Japanese are calling Society 5.0. We want to develop an agriculture 5.0. We have crops, we want to develop platforms, we have a huge collection of data in the farms, many sensors, we have to have more and more and more technologies to process this data we collect that will be placed in the decision-making process to have a better agriculture. And then we will have more efficiency and even innovation. And the digital technologies would also help to better explore our big and well-preserved biodiversity. Brazil has about 20% of the world biodiversity and we know we need to maintain it but we also can use it to develop new solutions to many areas, including its own maintenance. And the digital tool, the digital agribusiness tool, will be essential for that. And another, another essential initiative in this scenario is the open innovation that helps to put all of this in the same place. I believe all of you know Embrapa, which is the Brazilian Research Agriculture Corporation. Uh, Embrapa is the public research company linked to our Ministry of Agriculture. And through Embrapa, we promote many open innovation initiatives to connect all of these subjects to the market. One of the initiatives I'm, I'm presenting here to you is the Breed to Innovation Challenge. It's a program where we put in contact startups that want to work with Embrapa's technologies and potential investors. And also, we have specific challenges or contest, as some of you may call, focused on specific chains. Some of them are hackathons, some are competitions among the startups to achieve new investments and to make different partnerships with the academic partners or with private partners. We have, just to, for instance, to you to know, a challenge called Ideas for Milk and others in similar chains, like chains for fish, chicken, pork, coffee, and many others. And just to give you an idea about how big is this agri-tech world, and we call, as you know, agri-tech, the startups that are working in the agribusiness field, 
And just so you to know a little bit about this agri-tech world in Brazil, I will present to you a, a, just a brief result of the study we did last year through Embrapa that comprehends a landscape of the agri-tech here in Brazil. Our study shows that Brazil already has 1,125 agri-tech companies, this in the 2019. The agri-tech tasks in Brazil is basic to allow our Brazilian agriculture to increase in productivity, efficiency, sustainability, in order to face what we, we call about, we told about, the world scale challenge of providing farm products. The Ministry of Agriculture should help this ecosystem on many aspects, such as spreading the connectivity, gathering efforts, promoting more and more partnerships, setting good policies and by consequence promote innovation and ecosystems dedicated to the agribusiness innovation. Among the Brazilian agri-tech companies, as you can see in the slide, 18 were classified as before the farms. They work with inputs, laboratory analysis, biological control, fertilizers and nutrition, genomic and biotechnology, seeds, and even financial services, just to give you some examples. The other share is 35% classified as inside the farms. They work with precision agriculture, content and education, waste management, IoT, irrigation, um, monitoring, remote sensing, management systems, and even drones. And the majority of them works after the farm. That groups uh, deliver solutions in food in a broad overview, warehousing and logistics, bioenergy too, consultants, many of them work with consultancy, uh, retail management, online shopping, marketplaces, online restaurants. They work even with traceability and packing technology. And with these big pictures, what I want to emphasize to you is that our mission in the Ministry of Agriculture is really to promote the sustainable development of agricultural production chains. We want to be recognized by innovation, agility, and quality of implementation of those public policies to provide the sustainable development in a basis of innovation. And so, we believe that our agricultural landscape can really produce more food, more feed, more fiber, more fuel, and at the same time improve environmental quality by being, by being based on innovation and by being guided for those five bi big guidelines I told you, the bioeconomy, the digital, the sustainability, the open innovation, and the food tech. This is the big picture. I leave here my contacts, my LinkedIn, and also my email here from the Ministry of Agriculture. And I'm at your disposal to continue our discussion. Thank you very much. And I give the word back to Giovanna. Thank you. Thanks, Sibeli, for this very detailed picture of the main strategic actions of MAPA. Uh, I'd like now to invite uh, Otavio Celidonio, Executive Director and CEO of AgriHub. Uh, please, Otavio, join us in this discussion. Thank you, Giovanna. Hi, everyone. It's a great pleasure to be here and explain, explain a little bit about AgriHub and what we do and uh, uh, talk about uh, what are the innovation uh, sector here in Brazil? We, we are booming, like Sibeli said. So uh, AgriHub, it's a, uh, a new institution from the Sistema Famatos. Uh, so uh, we are a product from our environment. So I have to explain a little about uh, where we are and what are these institutions that created uh, AgriHub. So AgriHub is located in Mato Grosso, in Cuiabá, the capital of Mato Grosso State. Mato Grosso State is right in the center of South America. Here we are the biggest producer, producers of grains and meat production. Here we produce more than 30% from the soybean from Brazil and 10% from the soybean of the world. Uh, we produce more than 50% from our corn as a second crop. So in the same area, 
uh, where we, we, we produce soybean, we plant uh, corn as a second crop in the same year, and we harvest this year, we harvest almost the same uh, than, than, than soybean, using a little bit more than 50% from the soybean area. And we are the biggest producer in Brazil of cotton also, with uh, more than 70% of our cotton. And we have the biggest herd of cattle here also with 30 million heads. So as a, if we were a country, we would be in five or six position. I, I don't know really well now. But well, in this environment, as we are here in the center uh, of South America, we have uh, some big issues like logistics. And because of that, uh, we, we created some uh, power institution to represent the producers and look for their, their issues. So we have some, some big associations here. And also uh, the FAMATO system, uh, the FAMATO system, uh, FAMATO is the local farm bureau, so we represent the, the, the city's farm bureau here in Mato Grosso State as, at the state level. In the national level, we have the CNA, the, our, our federal confederation that represents all the locals and state farm bureaus from Brazil. And here uh, in Mato Grosso, we also have a CENAR which is the rural learning institution uh, from Mato Grosso State. And we have also IMEA. I, I work in these two institutions. IMEA, it's our local economy uh, think tank institute. So I worked there from 2008 to 2015 uh, as CEO also, the most part of this time. And I also work as CEO from Senar, the Rural Learning Institution. And in 2020 now, this year, I came to AgriHub just to, uh, to, to, to spin off this new institution. We start uh, the AgriHub as a program in 2016. We, we went to some uh, other countries like US, uh, Israel, uh, India, Australia, we went to do benchmark and also with Brazil, we have a great partnership with uh, Ezalki, Teki also, uh, there, Professor José with, with Sergio, uh, Marcos Hippoli is a great friend also, and we, we, we met everyone from agriculture ministry, so we are part of the national ecosystem of uh, innovation. And well, during 2006 and 2020, we were uh, we we work a lot to promote uh, new innovations to the producers. So we were doing mainly extension rural extension. So we work to understand what what are the producers' main issues. So we produce some studies about that, and with that we made some some events to. Uh, bring these startups, these new technologies to the producers. We, we, we did that from 2017 to 2019. And we also made at the beginning uh, some hackathons to help our local community to uh, look for our issues, the opportunities to create new things to, to our producers. Uh, in the end of 2019, we made a partnership with some companies, uh, some, some big companies and from, uh, with also uh, a, a, a company who, who administrates some, some local hubs. And uh, with that, with these, these partnerships with companies like uh, Amagi, one of our big trading companies, also, Agramazonia, one of our biggest delivery of inputs. Uh, Bayer company, that is a big chemical company, and also TMG, a uh, seed, seed company who produce genetics. Uh, we, we do a kind of, uh, a kind of program 
to uh, do open innovation with these companies and startups. So this year we start this open innovation program. And this year, uh, and with that, we, we, we had the opportunity to spin off AgriHub. So now, uh, beside this open innovation program, we are really uh, working to, to expand our extension program. So with that, we, we are doing a partnership with, with uh, uh, Federal University from Vissosa also. And we, we are working to help to understand even better the producer's issues. We, we are working some methodologies to, uh, to help to bring this technology uh, for each producer uh, in a different way. So each producer will have, will have a different rank, uh, depending on their, 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 their uh, maturity rank or their necessities and with that uh, we hope to understand better their their problems their issues and also help uh, the, the the entrepreneurs to promote new technologies to develop new technologies and we are also uh, working in some to to uh, congregate to to bring together some different companies in programs to develop traceability and to develop new ways to have better uh, service, for example, to, to have a, a climb forecast. So we are working big projects like that involving a lot of companies. Uh, and we, we are trying, of course, to put everybody together and help, help producers by uh, using the, the, the force of the private companies, the government and everybody together. So this is what, what we are doing right now. And we will more, be more than happy to have someone from Canada, from France, uh, here in Brazil, working with us and, and bringing some new technology for, for our, our producers. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Otavio. Uh, very interesting information that you share with us. Uh, I would like to invite now Jose Belaski, lecturer of the University of Sao Paulo, Exalc USP. Please, Jose, join us. Hello. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be here, is uh, participation of this, this panel. Uh, so thank you for, for the invitation. Uh, um, I, I will explain uh, what is the Zalc Tech, uh, our program to uh, technology and innovation in the University of Sao Paulo. But first, uh, University of Sao Paulo is the biggest um, and best ranked uh, university in, Sao Paulo, in Brazil. And the University of Sao Paulo has different units in, in Sao Paulo State. And our unit here in Piracicaba, Piracicaba is a city uh, two, less than 200 meters nor, uh, kilometers north from Sao Paulo city. Okay, so it's in the middle of the Sao Paulo state. Uh, our unit here, uh, Zalki, is a, a very famous uh, faculty of uh, agronomy and also forestry and in the last uh, decades, uh, other uh, uh, undergraduation uh, courses started, like uh, food uh, science and also biology, uh, management, economics, and environmental management. So today we have the undergraduation, seven courses of undergraduation, and also post-graduation in the master and PhD course. Okay, so this is the, the the Zalc. An example, Otavio and Marco Hippoli are two uh, former students uh, of Zalc. Okay, and I'm a lecturer of the, 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 the Zalc, uh, and I I start to, to work in, in the Zalc in, in seventy years ago. And my my uh, and scientific area is plant pathology. Uh, Zalc Tech is a program of the University of São Paulo dedicated 
to help people and companies to establish new companies or new business uh, related to technology and innovation. So it's a program that is starting 1996. So next year will uh, uh, be in 15 years uh, since the first year of uh, Exalc Tech. Uh, Exalc Tech, since then, uh, 15 companies uh, were graduated in the Exalc Tech program. Okay, so this is the, a very good example of uh, imagine 15 companies that are in the market, so they are very well established and they start in our program uh, for startups. So we, we work in, in this, in this uh, process, okay? So first, anyone from the University of Sao Paulo or outside of our university can uh, start to discuss ideas of new business or new technologies or new kind of services and uh, to, to turn to, uh, to, to analyze if a new business is possible in this way. So anyone that has an idea, of course, if it is related to agriculture, uh, food science, digital agriculture, or doesn't matter if it, if it is agriculture or not, but better if it is. So anyone inside of the University of Sao Paulo or not can talk with us to discuss new ideas. And in this process, we, that uh, the, 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 the cost is nothing, okay? In this process, we, we try to help people to identify uh, the market, establish a market share, and identify potential investors, private or governmental, and analyze if the business plan is possible to establish a company. So this period can, uh, be um, finished in six months or some years, doesn't matter, okay? So this is the first process. Any idea, any person, person can talk with us, belonging to the University of Sao Paulo or not, okay? Uh, the second part is if the, the idea is good, if the, the idea has potential to turn in a company, okay? the people from this, this, this um, uh, um, seed company can try to be inside of our facility. We have a, a building in the University of Sao Paulo, in the, inside of Zalki, and this building has 10, uh, like a boxes, okay? 10 boxes to beginning companies, okay? Like uh, people that work with uh, uh, laboratories or uh, food science, so people that would like to establish new uh, companies can be inside of our facility. So this is the following process after to discuss the business plan. In this way, uh, people can be inside of the Exalc Tech facility for up to two or three years, okay, with a minimum cost that we use to keep the facility that we have. Okay, uh, until now we have one, one building and now we are applying to, to the University of Sao Paulo to uh, approve a second building. So we hope that in the next year we'll have uh, two buildings of Zalctec and to receive more 10 companies because our space today is for 10 companies and we are applying to receive more 10. So in the same moment, have up to 20 companies, okay? And this new facility maybe will be more related with digital agriculture because it's an area with uh, different people that would like to start new ideas and, and try new technologies, okay? And after that, after two or three years of uh, period inside of our facility, when the people, uh, test their ideas, their, their products, their service, and establish or not, and decide to establish or not the new company. If the process is effective, the people can be, uh, go outside of the Zalc Tech and be a real company, company in the market. 
So in this way, I said to you that we uh, graduated, that's the term that you use, we graduated 15 companies, companies until uh, since 1996, okay? And today we have 10 uh, seed companies inside of our facility. What is the, the advantages of the, the Zaltec program, okay? Uh, for us, we are in the, the, in the University of Sao Paulo. Uh, Exalc has uh, almost 200 professors, okay? More than 100 laboratories. We are the, 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 the best agronomy and forest uh, university in Brazil and, and one of the most important uh, universities in agriculture uh, in the world. Uh, what happened? We have a very good knowledge in size and uh, agriculture production inside of Azalk. Okay, we have a lot of students, undergraduation and master and PhD students. So we'd like, and that's what we try, is uh, try to uh, help these people, the the researchers and also the students, uh, help them to uh, think in innovation and new business. So the biggest challenge that we have is to convince some professors to think about innovation. So because they day, day by day uh, work, the work day of the process, professors are uh, classes and scientific papers. So this is a normal uh, process, okay? So some of them uh, can think in and can act outside of the academic. So in this way, some ideas, some, some good ideas uh, started to, to be discussed and turned in companies. So in this way, that 15 companies uh, be graduated in the ESAL tech. And we are starting a new period and that, that is very interesting to, to explain to you. Um, we have a new council in the ESALC tech, uh, different professors, and we would like to, to turn things uh, better and faster inside of the ESALC tech. What we need to do that? We need two things. Uh, first, uh, be more effective inside of the ESALC to convince people to try to think about uh, technology and innovation. So we, we have to convince the students that, okay, we, you can be a professor or we, you can be a professional in the technology and you can uh, work with innovation. So we, you don't need only to think about to be an employee of a company. You can uh, maybe, if you want, you can establish your business okay in technology and innovation so if you have uh, good ideas so let's discuss so that's one point to convince people that this is a way that we have to work a second one is uh, you saw in this this panel that agriculture is uh, the business of brazil okay and what happened uh, thousands and thousands of the producers they have problems in the field in their systems. What we need, bring these people to a Tech to present their problems, to present their issues. In this way, put together, join our researchers, our students, the producers, and discuss potential solutions. In this, in this way, we will be much more effective to help the producers. So, uh, today we have a company, uh, a private company that work with the strategic plans and management, and they are helping us to establish a new uh, structure for Zaltec to be much more effective in this process. Until now, in 15, in almost 15 years, we thought that okay, we can receive only 10 companies, but today we we cannot. Do, to think only about that. We have to think that, okay, we have a physical structure to receive 10, people, uh, 10 companies, 10 seed companies, but we can think to help people 
to start the new business outside of Zalptec. So the idea is to uh, turn things much faster and better that we can, okay? And the last thing that I'd like to, to talk to you is, um, Zalptec is inside of the, the AgTech Valley or the Valley of Piracicaba is. Uh, Piracicaba has different universities and other cities around of Piracicaba less than two hours or one hour of uh, car travel. We have different universities. Also, we are in the middle of the sugar cane, one of the most important sugar cane uh, produce, uh, production areas in Brazil. So we have different companies, not only related to, or to, to agriculture, but we have different companies in this area. So the Agtech Valley is the Valley of Piracicaba, where we, can, we have uh, ecosystems of innovation and technology. So the Zalptec is part of this, this valley, okay? So we have to join people and help people to talk more and more about this. And in this way, we can receive, for example, in this, this panel is, very, is a very good opportunity to us because in this way, uh, people from outside can uh, see the Zalptec as a gate to understand and to establish new um, contact uh, with people that work in the, in the agriculture in Brazil, okay? So thank you very much. And I, we talk, later about the questions and the discussion. Thank you, and now is with you, Giovanna. Thank you, José. Very interesting information. Good to know that Ezalki is starting a new phase. Nah? Very good news. Uh, I would like now to invite Marco Kipoli, PAG, founder of Bioenergy Consulting Company AgriHex, and O Agro Não Para. Uh, Marco, please. Uh... Hi, Giovanna. Thank you so much for the brief introduction. First of all, I'd like to initiate my conversation thanking Andrea and Paolo for the invitation, and most importantly for Elsa for accepting it and participating in this uh, incredible discussion today. So I was given the task to talk a little bit about the AgTex uh, world environment, some of the challenges. But before I do that, uh, I want to congratulate our speakers. I think. Uh, you all laid out the floor for this uh, last conversation today, prior to our Q&A session. But uh, there are two or three things that I would like to bring from uh, the first presenter today that relies the importance of the agribusiness in Brazil. So 24% of our GDP comes from agriculture today. It's a very important chunk of the economy that runs through those uh, rural producers in any other sectors that they actually operate in Brazil. At the same time, we mentioned about that 50% of our exports in 2020, they're coming out from this important and huge sector of Brazil. So the importance more and more became a, a, a reality, especially because we're running on a pandemic uh, environment today where we are suffering several casualties and several uh, limitations commercially, health speaking, mentally, that we need to start feeding people with good quality feed and good quality food. So we did talk about that before. Uh, another data that is important for all of you that are taking this, uh, this conversation today with us is to say that Brazil, along with uh, India and China, are the only three countries in the world that have about 33% of the employer or the labor force related to agriculture or livestock operations. So this is a very important number that people need to know and value that a lot. Brazil today has about 244 million acres. So if you want to convert that to, to, to hec I'm sorry, 244 million hectares. And if you want to convert that to acres, you need to multiply by roughly two. You see how big is Brazil today. But not only that, 158 million hectares today does not have uh, any problem with pastures, for example, because this is how much area we have dedicated for livestock. If you think about as well that we also talked about connectivity in one of the presentations, less than 2% of the Brazil country is covered with some sort of connectivity. So once we have in mind that companies need to bring, and I say like the big four companies that we have on telecom today, I don't need to name it, uh, it's really important to make sure that 
they have like machines in Brazil and around the world that are worth more than a million dollars. For example, cotton harvesters, the, the pineapple harvesters, they are worth more than $1 million. And you only be able to retrieve 100% of the results of that machine if you are able to provide connectivity. Because those machines today, and I give another example for a green harvester, uh, harvesters like soybeans, cotton, uh, wheat, or other things like that, or winter crops, they have over 2,000 sensors and three computers that run the machine. And if you're able to connect the machine to your manager, to your office, to your headquarters, and take uh, decisions on, on the way that the machine is harvesting, at the time it is harvesting, you will be able to bring back a lot of more value to that machine because you'll be able to set the parameters of how the machine operates and retrieve much more and reduce losses. But with that said, another panorama that's very important for ag techs today is that if you're thinking about bringing a new solution, uh, a, a new, uh, it can be an idea, it can be a, a software, a SAS, it could be a machine, or it either could be a management uh, opportunity. You need to realize, and I come from a, a machinery background, that in Brazil today, we have roughly 680,000 tractors in operation, okay? It's a huge number today, and about, 170,000 harvesters, and then it could be grain harvesters, coffee harvesters, and also cotton and sugarcane harvesters. So if you're thinking about having a solution, and if you think about the machinery work, this is a big chunk of opportunity that's available for you. So 95% today of the producers, they have some sort of digital agriculture uh, equipment. It can be an auto steer, it can be a, a sidebar, it can be either a telecom that sends the information by GPRS or Wi-Fi or any other, even satellite connections, which are those very expensive today that needs to be uh, reworked with some other new situations of, uh, of technology that will be available. But why I'm saying that is I'm saying that Brazil, as was shown before, in 30 years took from the fifth position to the first position in net exporting program others to around the world, but at the same time, Brazil caught up very, very fast uh, compared to US, Europe, and Australia, which are first world countries in technology. Uh, in, the, in about two, three decades ago, we were known by being uh, driven by technology. And recently, in the last 10 years, five years maybe, Brazil is actually pulling the line and becoming the driver in driving technology. Also. What I want to say about that is from uh, consumers of technologies, we also continue to consume them, but we also developing new technologies that are applied to all over the world. And the reason I'm saying that is it's easy. Uh, it was shown as well that we are first in production in sugar, coffee, uh, orange juice, uh, short fiber for cellulosic, uh, grains, sugar cane, etc. And we are second in many, many things like corn, feed, uh, meat, uh, and then when I say meat is uh, cattle meat, ethanol, and when we say ethanol, people will always say, well, how come Brazil is not the first one in ethanol? We are the first one producing ethanol out of sugarcane, but we are the second one in production size because USA is the biggest producer of ethanol from corn. And in Brazil, what we can see today is that from the last five, six years, many ethanol-based sugar, uh, um, ethanol-based corn uh, products are being created with new factories, especially Mato Grosso, and Celidone is here, he can also say about that. And that is proving to be also a very important and good uh, job opportunity for many, many of us. But with that said, uh, I would like to go in a little bit more on these, uh, a little bit of the mindset, if I may say like that, because if you want to try to become an entrepreneur, a businessman, if you want to come up with a startup idea, and then there are a few things that you need to know. And I think uh, those, those things, are, are, I'm gonna try to list, list them just a little bit to have in mind that you really, really look, uh, need to look at that with a lot of passion. Okay, first one is about innovation. We talked a lot about innovation. Um, there's a lot of people today that still don't know what innovation means, okay? So to innovate is not to do something that you normally do just differently. It's do something you normally do differently but with a lower cost, with a better, uh, with better, uh, with better net revenues, with better customer acceptance, and most importantly, with better customer experience. So, the ability to innovate is not just doing something different that's already been done in the past. 
We also talk about digital transformation. It's how we talk, it's how we negotiate, it's how we meet, it's how we do business with. Those are standards that we have changed in past that we are common to, accustomed to, and that what we could see, especially during this 2020 year, due to the pandemic, we saw a lot of companies being created and a lot of new technologies that came up faster that would be coming up if we didn't have this epidemic. And this accelerated the process and we just could find out, say, hey, we have so much more to do and uh, there's so much more that we're expecting in the next five, 10 years that we're already in place today. So transformation is very important as well along with innovation. The other point is what I call the golden circle. The golden circle is a, is, is a methodology, real simple, that says that why you're doing something, how are you gonna do it, and what are you gonna do it to solve a problem? And if you are trying to innovate, what you need to do is try to actually answer these three questions, okay? And going back to the management of this company, of this idea, we need to understand that uh, we need to create a new mindset, a management mindset where this mindset is driven about collaboration, innovation, it's about inclusion, it's about diversity, because all of those small pieces, when they're put together, they become a great, great booster in your success, okay? Uh, another thing that's important, especially for the startups, is that many, many times you're gonna fail, and we need to fail to learn. There are people that say, I cannot fail, and, and in the startup world, it doesn't mean only food tech, ag tech, can be fintech, insure tech, doesn't matter. You need to fail to be sure that you looked at all the options that you had available. So failing is very important in the, the world of uh, startups. The environment where we work, uh, we've seen a very big shift in how we work from a, a corporate office to a home office. We've seen a, a shift in how we uh, work from a corporate office to a co-working office. And now we are seeing uh, those uh, people that actually doesn't have any one of those. They, they, every week they work from one place to another. They, they, they're called those guys that travel a lot and they don't have a fixed point to do that. So the environment where you're gonna work as well is very important for you to make sure that your team will feel fine about that place, you'll feel included in that solution because in the real world, in this new generation, this new generation of, of, of professionals, they don't wanna work for somebody else. They first would like to work for themselves, but in collaboration with others through a cause. So that's very important. And at last but not least, uh, leadership is very important because that will lead uh, how you're gonna be able to either achieve success in one year, five years, or only 10 years. So your leader, your CEO, your, your director, doesn't matter the name or the job role, the person's in charge of something, he needs to connect people. He needs to listen to people. He needs to drive people to the right direction. He needs to help them, support them. If you don't have that mindset in your uh, environment, in your company, in your startup, you are success, uh, susceptible to fail. So I try to talk a little bit about the environment. I try to look about the mindset. But you all have to have in mind one thing. Everything starts with a dream. Everything starts with a story. Everything starts with an idea. And there are no dumb ideas. They are not right or wrong until you have proven that you succeeded. So thank you so much for having me in this discussion today. And I look forward for our conversation afterwards. Thank you very much. Many thanks, Marcos. Very interesting point of views. Uh, I would like to thank all of you today for your presentations and thoughts. Uh, we can now start our round of uh, Q&A section. Uh, and I would like to open our discussions today with the topic of connectivity. Uh, we, we all know the need of improve uh, in connectivity in rural areas in Brazil, but we also know that connectivity technology is changing. Uh, in what extent do you see access to high-speed connectivity as a real bottleneck for digitalization of rural areas in Brazil? What are the prospects of expansion of access to better connectivity in, in those areas in Brazil? Maybe we could start with Sibeli. Uh, and José, if you want to make some comments, and also the comments 
uh, of all of you are welcome. Okay, Giovanna, thank you for the question. I believe the connectivity is a huge bottleneck for agriculture in Brazil. As I said, we, we have a study here that show us that about uh, we have really connectivity in agriculture areas only in 23% of the areas. Then we have a, a huge um, problem to solve. We try to solve this by using um, four uh, strategies, four points. The first point is to use the connectivity uh, provided by the National Research Network, we call in Brazil RNNP, RNNP. And using this network that uh, provides internet for universities, for research centers, we could uh, increase it a little bit to achieve forms. This is the first uh, strategy. The second is to use the, 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 telecom, the telecom connectivity, 4G, 3G, then we need to have strategies to have money to put more, um, to put more devices to have connectivity in the areas we don't have. And the third is to use uh, the, the satellite technologies for increasing the, the connectivity in the forms. We have partnerships between um, the Embrapa and the companies like Visiona that works with satellite technologies to have uh, more connectivity on the farms. And there are others, other, I, I, I told you four, because there are other strategies that we can merge all of those, those three. Then we, we really believe this is a bottleneck, but we are working with this together with all the ministries in Brazil. And I believe, I strongly believe that just the first step I told you, the RNP a network would increase a little bit this, um, these points that we do not have connectivity in the farm in Brazil. And this, and then uh, with the, all, all of these strategies, working with all the ministry and having more money to, to conduct these projects, we could increase the connectivity. That is a really bottleneck. But I need to mention that it's not about to, to go to the farm with connectivity. We need to go with content. We need to go with more information to, to use this connectivity. We need to have né, strong information, uh, virtual learning strategies to, to give information about research, about the market, about many other uh, issues in agribusiness for the farmers and the farmers to the consumers. Then we need not only to think about connectivity, but to, to think about the content we will exchange using the connectivity. And this is, uh, I believe, it answers your questions. And if you have any other things about this issue, I'm here. Very good, Sibeli. Nah, you anticipated my next question, nah, and I will make a link between your answer and, and the question. Uh, besides connectivity and besides content, um, what is needed to do for innovation solutions to be more adopted in Brazil? Nah, Marco mentioned uh, uh, the mindset of innovation, and we know that innovation is also about tentative and error. Uh, so I would like to, to, to know your perception about uh, the appetite of Brazilian producers for ag tech solutions, ag tech innovation solutions in Brazil. So maybe Otavio, uh, could share your views with us uh, and also Mark, Marco if you want to comment that would be great. Great Giovanna, great question. Uh, well, well first of all I would like to uh, share a little about internet, the connectivity here in Mato Grosso. Mato Grosso have just like five percent from our rural area connected so we are a very huge state with Population 3.2 million people 
you know, size like uh, German and France together. It's, this is the size of Mato Grosso. So uh, we have a very poor connectivity, uh, but we, we, we also, we are using some, some uh, other kind of uh, internet here. For example, we have some local providers, uh, internet providers that they could bring internet by radio, radio uh, system. So we start uh, to collect, a, a, to do a, a analysis about that. Uh, we have uh, 130 companies like that spread now over our state, and 60% of that they can provide this kind of solution. So the producers they can have internet at their 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 house, and we we also uh, understand that this is it's very important to have. Uh, not only internet for the machines, because people uh, want internet to socialize, to do their, their things, and it's really important to have internet to the workers, to the people who, who live in the countryside. So it's important to do that. Because of that, we are working to build a partnership with our state government and some private companies to build internet and with uh, uh, with 4G, 4G connectivity, uh, in all over state, we are trying to work with that with some big companies and also to with the producers to start this kind of programs. Uh, well, and talk about uh, talk about the, the challenges to to uh, the producers use. It's it's a very very nice question. Uh, first. First, it's important to say uh, most of the producers, they, they uh, have a, a lot of fear about new things like technology. So it's not so easy to do, to bring technology to the field. It's, it's, it's hard. Uh, we were doing that for four years. And uh, before that, we were working with, with Senar also. So it's not easy. And what we, we try to do to convince the producers is, is try to understand what producers are more influent. So uh, we created a network called uh, the Growers Alpha uh, that are producers who are influent, that are, that are open to innovation. And we try to do some, some projects with them to spread to other other producers because the producers they can understand they can uh, have information about some new technologies but they they really uh, feel uh, comf uh, comfortable to to start when he see he see uh, some other producers using this technology so this is what we are trying to do and we will start next year to work to uh, to form some consultant to start this kind of uh, digital transformation. So we we will we will create a education program to form uh, some consultant to to do that also and help us help our producers. Great, uh, very good news. <laughs> Um, so maybe we, we could explore a little bit more about uh, our existing ecosystem. Nah? Uh, and I would like to, to, to know your views. Nah? What are the main pain points that are being currently addressed by Agtex nowadays in Brazil? What are potential pain points uh, that could be addressed uh, in near future, uh, what uh, is is there something that we are missing? How mature is our ecosystems? How advanced we are? Uh, so maybe Jose Velasque could start, and and the others, if you feel free to comment. 
Okay, thank you for the, the question. It's not so easy to me, so let's thank you. <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm saying that it's not so easy because it uh, depends too much of the, the kind of a business and uh, the places and the, the issues that they, the companies work, okay? Uh, I, I, and, and this way, I'd like to, to listen to the others too because they, they live in different uh, conditions. They, they work in different, with different conditions. Uh, in, in the case that I know very well is uh, here, we have uh, startups that are very well established and they work with um, a, a biotechnology in the way of uh, microorganisms and pests development and creation. So uh, companies dedicated to uh, creating a, a pests, for example, uh, every uh, big uh, company uh, that produce and sell uh, herbicides, uh, fungicides, insecticides, they have to, to use uh, tests with uh, organisms. Okay, so companies, we have different companies that produce uh, this kind of uh, microorganisms or even tests to uh, other companies to test. So in this way, and, and this is a, a knowledge that the Zalk has, uh, very well, and so uh, this this kind of business is uh, very well established and mature. So uh, we have a, a good, very good examples of that. In the same way, thinking about the insects, the pests, we have the biological control uh, established, and different companies and huge companies, and this is uh, issue that grow uh, producers. Uh, like to try to use, okay? So when we talk about uh, uh, biological methods to control pests or try to control diseases, this is an issue that sounds very good to producers and is uh, one of the business that Brazil is a uh, worldwide leader. So it's uh, biocontrol methods applied to field. So this is one, one very good example. And um, I, I, I'd like to say that the others that has a potential, okay? Um, what, one of that is, for example, connectivity. So as we, we were discussing uh, uh, for the, the, last, uh, the first question, connectivity is a problem in Brazil. So uh, for one way, if a company uh, wants to provide a kind of a service or a product that the producers have has to they have to, to, to have connectivity inside of the farm, this technology or service will, will not uh, work. The other way, connectivity is a, is a company offer connectivity for farms. This is a very kind of uh, 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 business. So one of the things that companies uh, and people need to understand is uh, what are the challenges of the producers? They have to understand this. I, I will give to you one example. I was, uh, this week, I spent two days in a farm, a huge farm in Sao Paulo, uh, uh, evaluating an experiment. And people of this farm, and this is a multinational a company, okay? They are the, the leader of the orange juice uh, in the world. And they explained to me that they receive a company and the company um, offer a kind of a service to them. Uh, the service is to, to use a kind of a vent, a drone, and collect data uh, of all the farms, they have uh, more than 20 farms in Sao Paulo state, collect all the data using drone, uh, IRW image from each farm. And with that, give to, sell to the company, uh, data about the infestation of uh, weeds and also the presence of some pests. And also count the area and try to establish the, the production. Uh, okay, very well. So they start 
to to have this. Uh, they, they they establish a, a, a agreement and they start they offer the service. However, between the the time between the the collecting the image and the the time when the company received this information is almost four months. Four months is too much for a producer. It's impossible. The producer has to receive the, the information much faster. So what happened? This company, this new company, this technology company, they have a very well uh, uh, ability, capacity of uh, to use drones and collect data, but they don't have the capacity to process the data. So they didn't understand what the grower, the producers need. So this is a, a, an example for, for companies. So uh, thinking about connectivity uh, and the, the, uh, how speeds producers need information is important for uh, new companies and new business. And Giovanna, if I may add a comment, can I? Yes, please. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. So, uh, so I would like to say something on behalf of Otavio and Jose is that uh, it, it's very important when we talk about connectivity because it doesn't mean connectivity needs to be hard to be understood or it needs to be too complex, okay? Any form of connectivity is important to support our farmers in Brazil and anywhere in the world. But what I want to say is, we are very much limited in, 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 in area coverage today in Brazil, totally opposite from the US. Uh, and normally where it's covered is where we have density of population, so major cities. So when you go out in the fields and the areas, that is basically not covered at all. But the reason I'm saying is this, that we are hearing a lot about agriculture 4.0, but at the same time, we see companies in Brazil talking about uh, 5.0 G, uh, type of connectivity, right? So the IoT thing, the Internet of Things, but we don't need 5.0. We can do that with 4, and we can even do that with 3G. We need to understand, and those companies need to understand that for farming purposes and for connecting people, as Otavio mentioned, because when, once you connect, once you build a network, you know you don't build that network only for, for, for farm machinery. You also build that for business, for people, and for environment, and any, anything else that you can apply that. So one of the things that are very much polemic about is when I talk to those, uh, even with Anatel, which is our uh, center regulation firm in Brasilia that regulates all the telecom in Brazil, and they say, well, we're gonna bring 5G. Oh, super. Well, we don't need that. We need to improve what we already have. If you stop uh, some of that investment for, on the new technology, because the, the, the farmers, they're not ready for 5G. They will have to trade cell phones, they will have to trade PDAs, they will have to trade all kinds of equipment that they have today because that equipment doesn't speak with the 5G technology. That would require, once that technology is available, to everyone change what they have. And they're not ready. Because if you know, every telecom technology in Brazil today needs to be proven and needs to be given the right support that if you have a 2G or even an edge a, a, a app, you need to have the company providing that. So what I'm saying is that we need to make sure that we improve what we have connectivity wise, even the 3G or the 4G, which is the biggest coverage that we have on available today. But think about 5G as a future for sure, for internet of things, for having machines operating maybe driverless, seems less, but we are still a long way from that to happen. So my advice as a, as a, as a a passionate about agribusiness is that we need to consolidate more what we have today, technology-wise. Just went mute. I'm sorry. I don't know what happened. Went mute. Okay. So what we need to do today, uh, Giovanni, is to make sure that we consolidate what we have and futurely expand to 5G. But we are able to do much more now what exists than what we want to expect to exist in five or ten years. Is that clear to everyone? Okay, it's great. Thank you, Marco. Uh, very, very interesting point of view. Uh, unfortunately, we are close to, to the end of this Q&A section. Uh, I would like to thank again uh, all of you for the presentation and insights. And um, I, also, uh, I will pass now to Paulo for final remarks.
Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Giovanna. Thank you all. I, I think it was very interesting. We, we could uh, share uh, an overview about the Brazilian agri-tech, agricultural, agribusiness ecosystem. And I hope that uh, this panel will contribute to bring uh, closer together the Brazilian agri-ecosystem to the Canadian, more specifically in the Quebec region, and the French ecosystem so that we can cooperate together and find solutions that can be uh, efficient to all of us. Well, uh, thank you very much for all our, uh, the contribution of all our panelists uh, and especially uh, your contribution, Giovanna, as a, a moderator to facilitate the conversation in this panel. And I would also like to take this opportunity to uh, thank Fabrique A and all our partners that made this, uh, this panel possible and hope to, to be connected with you all again to bring the Brazilian, Canadian and French uh, agri ecosystems closer together for the benefit of everyone. Thank you very much.